Welcome to the Amsterdam Film Show, February 2020, um, the first edition of the month. Yeah. And welcome, Kiko. Hello, hello. So we're your regular co-hosts for the Amsterdam Film Show. Uh, so we've got, let's see, Cathy Central and Kiko Mara, local filmmaker. Hey. But we've been here meeting on the radio for quite some time now. We share... Reviews, special film events and screenings and festivals, because there's loads in Amsterdam. And then just a heads up of the highlights of the cinema releases in the Netherlands, as they are in the Am- Am- Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the accent? Yeah, I think it's a true Amsterdamer's accent. So the films we're going to talk about today, let's give you a taster of the show. Uh, first up, we're going to talk, I think, Last Call, the documentary for Sama. We've yeah. both seen that. Oof. Still at the cinemas, but it was out last month. New films for February, uh, The Lodge, which is a horror thriller. I've seen it. Kiko has it. I know. I really wanted to see that. And then we also have... Oh, uh, Uncut Gems, which was a cinema release, kind of, but not really. It's Limited. Really a ne- it's really a Netflix. Well, it was acquired by Netflix later on. You're back with the Amsterdam Film Show, and we've got a kind of last call um, because there's a there's a film out in the cinemas that is a last month release, but you might be geared up to see it because uh, it's a documentary that just won a BAFTA. It didn't win an Oscar. No, but it won Cannes Best Documentary. So, like, it yeah. It cancels out the Oscar. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about, listeners? It's for Sama. Um, and the director, Wad Al-Khatib, um, she's so charming. So um, this documentary, should we tell you a bit about it? Because we've both seen it. Um, IMDb says it's an intimate and epic journey into the female experience of war. Uh, basically, Wad Al-Khatib, the filmmaker, she's pregnant and she gives birth in Aleppo and it's a city under siege. And she's also based at a hospital with her partner, who's a doctor. And she documents the various stages in the war and um, the rebellion sort of thing. Um, but it's also all about family and love. There's a lot of humour in it, don't you think, Kiko? Yeah, no, I, I, I surprisingly laughed a couple of times, which was was necessary because it was a brutal yes. experience um i think it, i think it's a very important film i think the the perspective from uh wad al Katab is is very unique and uh because she's she just grabs her camera and and she's relentless you know there there is there is it, it you you it opens a window into and you can see into these people's lives and how they are living their co- their quotidianity of, of of war and and it's insane yeah. it's insane it's it's something that I, that people feel blind for and i don't know i think it's one of those films that is a big eye opener on a situation but like like the the same movie says like it's going to um, people forget about things rather quickly yeah that's a shame i mean and i think when they say the female experience of war i'm not sure if i really like that or agree with it i think it's just the human experience yeah i agree i agree uh just because she has the baby because it was her and she had her daughter yeah and it was like two girls but it's more about the community yes absolutely uh the family around them there's a particular i think it's either her cousin or something like that very standout character uh who's just you know uh steals the steals the scene sometimes with this lovely uh, beautiful face she has moments of joy and laughter and humor but she has moments of complete heartache where she's crying yeah and Um, how to like keep waking up in this world Mm -hmm. i'm i'm super uh impressed and and well i have tremendous respect for both of them Mm -hmm. uh and 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 her husband is one of the purest people on earth probably like both of them are, are powerful enough yeah and the moments when you know they have this little baby and they're just playing with her in a, in the midst of bombing and they're trying to entertain her like you know and he's got a surgical mask on his face or something and he, he's going you know playing peepo almost like how you would at home here in amsterdam with a baby you know completely safe and you know they're doing the same things that you know they're utterly human and just like us but you you don't think of what it would be like for us in that war zone or like doing normal family things um and there is we must talk about this there is one moment in the film which is just has everybody gasping and i've never had that before i i really gasped out loud can you remember that moment i, I don't know I, I think i know which which moment does it involve like a a baby a baby delivery yeah not her own baby delivery but it's uh um, that yeah that was 
I don't know. It, it, that was tough. I, I, I looked away at moments and uh, I don't know, like people were sobbing around me yeah. and uh, I cried the entire freaking movie. I went with a friend of mine, Duncan, who was here in the show. Yeah, the other we day. know Duncan. He's been uh, on the Amazon film show. He, he was crying like every, it's I don't know. It's a very intense experience. Yeah. There is I didn't know much about the movie. Yeah. So I went in rather blindly. But I think that there is nothing that could have prepared me for 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 that film. Yeah, yeah. And I I've had a friend who just said, "Oh, would you like to come with me?" And it is um, it's there will be screenings with Dutch subtitles, and there will be screening with English subtitles. So we went to see one with English subtitles at the Cine Center. Um, and yeah, it's not your top of like, oh, let's go and see a, a document, a war documentary movie yeah. together with your friend. Um, but actually, it was uplifting by the end because, you know, they, they get out of the war zone. Um, they've managed to come away with this film and communicate this thing. Like I said, there's humor and warmth and it does celebrate the love and the family that they yeah. have. Um, now, if you like the sound of this, <laughs> you know, uh, you don't mind crying, going to see a, a kind of sad no, documentary. No, go see it. It's, it's something that everybody should see. Like, yeah. It's not going to be easy, but, you know, it's one of those things that you just need to, to watch. Yes. So if you do like the sound of it, uh, it's still showing in at least five cinemas in Amsterdam. That's how good it is because, you know, yeah. it's been around since last month at least. Um, it's still in the cinemas. Some of them will be in Dutch subtitles and some with English subtitles, including on Monday the 17th of February, there will certainly be a screening of Four Summer with English subtitles at the Rialto. So this is actually the Amsterdam Film Show. We're talking about a new film release in February and the film is The Lodge. It's a horror thriller, which is right down Kiko Street, but he hasn't seen it. No, uh, I was feeling really bad the day of the screening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, directed by Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz. Yes. And uh, they are also like the brains behind this really cool film called Good Night Mommy. Okay. Which is right. amazing. It's yeah. their previous film. And uh, so I'm really excited about their new film. Um, well, how was it, Kathy? <laughs> um, well, I saw the trailer and I knew nothing about them, whereas you were excited. I, uh, they were unknown to me. I saw the trailer, but it, it felt to me like it was going to be a bit like The Shining. It was quite stylistic, minimalistic. Um, and in the trailer, the vulture was quoted and it said, game changing horror. And I thought, oh, well, this is going to be good. And I really did like the trailer. Uh, um, and I thought, you know, what's going to be? So the story, um, IMDb says a soon to be stepmom is snowed in with her fiance's two children at a remote holiday home. Just as relations begin to thaw between the trio, some strange and frightening events take place. Um, now there's more to it than that. Uh, so Grace, who's the woman who's who's the soon-to-be stepmom. Uh, she's quite young herself, uh, and she used to be in a cult. Um, but her cult, they all committed mass suicide apart from her, and she was the daughter of the cult leader. Um, so the kids are freaked out anyway that she's coming. It's, it's super intense, yeah. Yeah, um, and she's the mistress-to-be or wife of... Um, because So she was kind of... Uh, the father of the children was married um, and he's a bit of a selfish writer journalist um, and basically Grace the young woman who was in the cult uh, was the mistress and now she's going to be engaged but a key thing is the beginning of the film um, the mother of the children after you know her husband's left her for this younger woman shoots herself dead oh and it's quite shocking it's quite shocking it all starts quite domestically and kind of like you can see the woman the mother does not really having a great time with the fact that the kids are going to go uh, and that he wants her husband wants a divorce because he wants to marry this girl and then this is played by alicia silverstone very short cameo at the beginning oh wow yeah uh ha! you know it's not really a spoiler because it happens right at the beginning of the film it's good to see that she's um, got a gig you know <laughs> yes no That's but, kind she's, of mean, but she does really good she does she's really good i didn't recognize her at first because you know she's a lot older now than you know she was in clueless oh um, yeah um uh so there you are but it's kind of it, it was brutal the, sh the way I she really shot i really don't want to know more because Ooh. i really want to see yes. it yes yeah yeah um but i mean that's it apart from that there's hardly any graphic scenes so there's different types of horror films aren't there with you yeah know, oh definitely yeah yeah horror doesn't mean no. like bloody and what we were talking uh last week after at the damn director scott is like 
there there doesn't have to be any blood for it to be a horror movie. It could be very well um, a, a horrific experience yes. or or something completely psychological. But yeah, like it doesn't have to rely on blood or oh yeah. well, that's what I think or goriness. Definitely yeah, no, not no, no, no. goriness. But there are some kind of graphic scenes, and the ones that there are, they pack that punch because the violence then seems extra real yeah uh, there are injuries and, and stuff and they're shocking grace gets some injuries to her face and they're just oh when you see how she, how she gets them it's uh, um so they don't come very much but they will have you kind of cringing i think if uh for that sort of thing and it is it's psychological it's it's quite slow it's it's a film that's less than two hours but it feels longer um so i was kind of you know getting a bit fidgety by the end of it uh, because also there's no music in the film um all right there's a little bit of music in the trailer but in the film there is absolutely hardly any um like really really it's it's kind of it weird it sounds like my kind of movie a hundred percent yeah um and there's very muted colors i quite like that um you know that they definitely artistic stylistic way they've they've used the color in it and they're in this lodge in the snow so you know that the visually it's quite interesting there um but there's some kind of twists and turns because they're in this lodge and the cra- you know crazy things start to happen things go missing yeah um and um all sorts of things like they be wondering at some stage, are we really dead or are we really alive? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the ending, it's quite a kind of ooh, ending. You won't, ex- I didn't expect it. And at first I went away dissatisfied. But after a few days, actually, I felt, no, that's actually a good ending. And it was surprising. Um, so there you are, listeners, if you're intrigued, I don't know. Uh, am I like... You know, I, I I am definitely intrigued. Your curiosity, I think your curiosity, like I think the ending will be different. When does it open of, again? Uh, I think it's already out there. Let's have a look. Oh, did I have it? Sixth uh, of February. Yeah, so it came out oh, last perfect. week. Perfect. So uh, ah, it's in the maybe cinemas. I'll go see it tonight. Yeah, and then just as a point about the acting, there's two children in it. The children, child acting is brilliant. Uh, sometimes, you know, child acting is not great, but they're good. The father <laughs> character, he's playing a really annoying bastard. But, you know, he does very well, that character, because the character is an annoying bastard. And Riley Keough, who plays Grace, who's this um, young stepmom, uh, she's very good. If you've never heard of Riley Keough, she was in uh, a film last a few years ago, Under the Silver Lake, uh, and she was oh yeah one yeah, of the main yeah. leads in that. Well, well, she was also in the house that Jack built. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a really intense scene with Matt Dillon. Oh, it, yeah. It's not fun. Right. Um, so I hadn't heard really of her. Really messed up yeah. film too. But she has had you know lead roles before, Riley Keough. And do you know anything else about her that I know? Uh, American Honey and uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, but guess what. She's the grandchild of Elvis Presley. Is she? Yeah. Okay, I can see it. Now I can see it. Now that you mention it, like, all right, yeah. So that is The Lodge. Some more film releases in February in Amsterdam. You will have heard of this one, maybe, Little Women. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a new film because, you know, there's the one with Winona Ryder, which is not so old, Um and there was once another one before that, or there was a series, I think, also. Yes. It's probably yeah. been done a zillion times. This is the book um, by oh, Louisa Olcott, Louisa May Olcott, class, American classic. But they've done a remake with the American filmmaker Greta Gerwig. Um, lots of talk about, oh, she should you know, have been nominated for a Best Director or whatever. And when I first saw that Little Women was being remade, um, I just thought, ah, well, you know, there's a perfectly good film with Winona Ryder and Christian Bale and all those guys in it. Um, why are they bothering? But this has had really good reviews. Um, it's about two hours and 15 minutes. Apparently, Greta Gerwig has like modernized it a lot, like just uh, got in an undercurrent of what she wants to say. Uh, a little bit about feminism, really. Um, like, are women, you know, at that at that age, you know, basically it was all about marriage and their life was i guess I, i'm not very familiar with the story all right well it's like four sisters the march sisters and the old sister or not the old sister but one of the sisters is a writer uh and it's very much on her looking back on their family life and the kind of 
each sister and the kind of uh, future or expectations of each sister. Uh, she herself wanted to be a writer. Uh, I think she was doing teaching for a bit and, and how they're basically restricted in that age and that um, culture to, you know, whereas men could go off and do what they liked. Um, and they were living in a particular circumstance. Um, I can't remember if it's during the Civil War or not, uh, but their father's away and their mother's there, but they're busy and they they kind of come from a, a wealthy family but they've got no money in that okay. respect so you know one of them has to cut her hair and sell it and you know they've oh to... really yeah oh yeah they used um, to make like wigs and stuff with that yes, right yeah um and they've you know very individualistic um daughters and stuff um spoiler one of the sisters dies oh, oh that, that's, right. that's like the biggest spoiler ever <laughs> so everybody knows because it's little women and it's is classic. it i didn't and it was also a spoiler on friends because little women featured in an episode of friends oh, right. because uh joey joey started you reading little women and uh he puts it in the freezer and, because yeah, someone it. is sick or yeah, something yeah 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 and rachel had started reading the shining so you know if yeah you yeah, yeah that was a good exchange know. uh got great actors as well Sir Ronan, emma watson florence Pugh. um And, of course, Meryl Streep makes a little cameo. Um, and it's out. And I don't know. Uh, oh, it's got the the man that everyone, or man boy that everyone keeps talking about, Timothy Chalamet, is oh, in yeah. it, in the Christopher Bale um, role, like Laurie, is the love interest. Um, I don't think it's your kind of film, Kiko. <laughs> no, I mean, but I, I, I think I'm going to watch it. Like The thing is, I'm not a big fan of Lady Bird. Yes. And yeah. that's the main reason I don't really want to watch this, but... Lady Bird being the film that uh, Greta Gerwig, I think, wrote and directed, like the last one. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I, the problem is uh, I felt that with that movie that I arrived late to the party. <laughs> like, because, because everybody had been talking, like, it was the best film of the year. It was This film was a masterpiece. And um, I watched it a lot later. And... Um, I, I, I wasn't caught by the charm of it. And I think that happens a lot when, when you're like, yeah, well, I'm in a re this really good party, come here. And then you arrive later and everybody's gone. I'm like, yeah, well, it was not that good. <laughs> yeah. And um, people who like Little Women, you'll know, you'll go to see it at the cinema. Um, there's a, a completely different film that also came out on the 6th of February, uh, a British kind of gangster street movie, um, a writer Andrew Onwibolu, who I haven't heard of, um, but one of the actors in it, Michael Ward, has just won a Rising Star BAFTA. Uh, so he's a young black actor. Oh yeah, um, and so he's he's uh, in this film, and the film is called Blue Story. It's only an oh, hour yeah. and a half. An hour and a half. Uh, crime That's a short one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's basically, there was a YouTube series, uh, Ratman's YouTube series. I haven't heard of Ratman. Uh, but it's basically an adaptation of a YouTube series about two young friends who become rivals in a street war. So they start off friends, but then they're both, I don't know, one of those things like you're from the east side, you're from the west side uh, of something uh, within London. Uh, so it's very much gang warfare. Uh, and Michael Ward stands out in that. That's uh, also released. Completely different film from Little Women. So, you know, take your pick. And then there's some other more smaller films, perhaps. Uh, Little Joe, uh, which is a drama, directed by Jessica Hausner. Never heard of her. But starring Ben Whishaw. <laughs> yeah, so it's a British film, and it's like a sci-fi drama, but it's not like a real sci-fi. But let me tell you the story then, and then you'll know what I mean. Uh, Alice, a single mother, she's a dedicated senior plant breeder at a corporation engaged in developing new species. She has en engineered a very special crimson flower, remarkable not only for its beauty, but also its therapy therapeutic value so if this flower is kept at the ideal temperature and fed properly and spoken to regularly this plant will make its owner happy oh yes so and then the tw plot twist is for this film little joe against company policy alice takes one home as a gift for her teenage son probably he's a bit moody teenagers uh joe and they christen it little joe but as the plant grows Alice's suspicion that her new creations may not be as harmless as their nickname suggests. What is Does the kid smoke it? Or... God knows. <laughs> I, th I think it doesn't just make you happy. It sounds like I think a it's, fun sci-fi. It's like a mind-controlling plant. Perhaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. totally sounds like a sci-fi. Why did you say that it doesn't sound like a sci-fi at all? 
Yeah, well, it's not got the special of effects of, you know, being well, on a planet yeah, but that's with aliens. not what sci-fi is. It's, no. That's a part of sci-fi. Like, not every sci-fi is Star Wars. But if, if something is uh, fictionized science, that yes. is the, definite, the very definition of, of sci-fi. Yeah. So I, I'm really, really into this kind of lo-fi, some people call it. Ah, lo-fi. So that's what you have for it. I didn't know there was a term for it. Good one, Kiko. Lo-fi. It's called Little Joe, and it should be out in the cinemas, but you may not find it everywhere because it's kind of fairly indie British movie. One that you should find in all the big pathways is Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. Oh. Um... Known, known at first as Birds of Prey, but they've renamed it Harley Quinn, colon, Burns, Birds of Prey, because it's based on the character Harley Quinn from The Suicide Squad. Yeah, which was a... <laughs> I have nothing good to say about that, so I'll just leave it there. But the Suicide Squad, yeah, it didn't do so well, but if you look on Rotten Tomatoes, which, you know, I do actually find it quite useful, Rotten Tomatoes, 80% with both the critics and the audience for, for Harley for Quinn. For Suicide? Oh, train. okay, for Harley Quinn. Yeah, so a lot of people saying it's, yeah, forget about Suicide Club which uh, or Suicide Squad, which is the <laughs> initial film. This is from the uh, DC Extended Universe, so it's all tied into the Joker and other things. Um, but this is better than the Suicide Squad, everyone's saying. Okay. I um, mean... Harley Quinn is a very, very uh, intriguing character. And she had a very, very unstable relationship with the Joker. Yes, uh, that's it. Very codependent. <laughs> and uh, no, no, no. Yeah, like um, she would, he would make her do horrible stuff. Oh, dear. And uh, she had this blind obsession with the Joker. And the Joker took, it, took advantage yeah. of that. And this was the Joker as played by Jared Leto. Is that right? Uh, well, uh, yeah. But I mean, he was in the movie for 20 minutes. But historically, yes. in the comic books, in the origin story, yeah. uh, Harley Quinn is a, is a psychiatrist that is treating the Joker. Uh -huh. And she falls madly in love with, her, with him. Yes. Emphasis on the madly. Uh, because she becomes this uh, psychopath. Yes, and uh, it's it's like a very very dark character that very very late it it started to have to have some redemption and standalone adventures, but at first it was like a really really dark yeah. uh, character. Yeah, uh, so I mean you've got that history of the comic book stuff behind it. There's a few I think incel types uh, on Twitter complaining that the costumes are not revealing enough or sexy Ugh. enough. Yeah, no, there's there's always going to be someone complaining. Always, um, about anything. Yeah, yeah. But it's done quite well, like I say. It's got Ewan McGregor in a cameo, which looks kind of fun. But I think he's the villain. Yeah, right. it's a laugh. Um, so, and of course, we should mention the star, Margot Robbie, uh, and she's playing Harley Quinn. Uh, so that's, I mean, obviously that's um, a, oh, what's it, Certificate 15, I think. And it's, you know, it's aimed at that comic book, silly market i don't know well uh, it's probably the kind of movie that you would just like smoke a joint to go see it have some popcorn yeah bit of fun yeah some like flashy colors and lights <laughs> and a f easy to follow yeah. plot is enough right completely different film a hidden life by terence malick also writer <laughs> terence malick that's also out in the cinemas um I haven't had a film from him for a while. This has kind of got some foreign language in it because it's set in uh, Austria. You have a character. It's based on a real story. A conscientious objector refuses to fight for the Nazis in World War Two. It's nearly three hours long. Well, yeah, Terence Malick. Um, my wife hates him. <laughs> It's that a thin he red hate. line. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, the one about life. Uh, what's it called? The meaning of life. I meaning, don't know. Yeah. Like the the boring of life. <laughs> it, 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 it's. It, I don't know. It makes me sleep like nobody yeah. else does. The last Terence Malick film I went to see, I was like, what a load of. Excuse my language, wank. This one looks <laughs> actually a bit better, but it's awfully long. It looks beautiful though. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I see the trailer in my head. Yeah, yeah. That, it started with these two people sewing. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, in the countryside, I mean, it, very bucolic. That's the thing. He's always had like a good cinematographer behind him, so it, the trailers always look good because the trailers are always going to sell you something that that the movie isn't. Yes. So um, I don't know. Like uh, I, I personally would rather go see Birds of Prey than uh -huh. the new Terrence Malick movie. 
My name is Cesar. I'm Robin. We're from uh, Mr. Mortgage and we help people from abroad that came to the Netherlands to buy uh, to buy their homes. We had a different idea of how to serve and assist our clients. Uh, so we started Mr. Mortgage. The language barrier, coming from a different country, who can you trust, who is friendly. We have set up a whole network of real estate agents uh, and notaries and such. We know we can trust with this focus group serving uh, international clients www.mrmortgage.nl Note from our sponsors, Mr. Mortgage. Thank you to those guys. You're back with the Amsterdam Film Show. We're giving you a heads up of films released today, actually, in Amsterdam. We have a silly film called Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> You're, like a, you're putting me in a spotlight here. I'm coming across as a hater now. <laughs> That's all right. No, we don't. Normally, you have a lot of passion for all sorts of films, but it's hard. Actually, Sonic the Hedgehog, it's like a live action animation. I don't know which studio it comes out of or whatever, but I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, you're like oh, no, I'm not going to be into this. Um, Jim Carrey is the baddie camping it up. <sighs> Uh, James Marden's always Marsden. James Marsden, he's always charming. So he's like the sidekick of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, and you may have last seen James Marsden on Westworld getting killed up as a cowboy. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was good in that. Broke my heart. Um, but this is just simple, fun, family, PG. Basically, Sonic the Hedgehog, the small, fast super hedgehog, comes down, I think, from outer space or something. And um, James Marsden playing a, a police officer who has to help the hedgehog defeat an evil genius played by Jim Carrey. I like the trailer. Um, I mean, it, it's a movie that ha- has had a lot of problems already. How do you know? Oh, uh, because they, 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 it, this movie should have come out like a year ago. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, uh, when they dropped the first trailer, pretty much about two years, uh, it was a completely different design of the Hedgehog, of Sonic. Yeah. And it was horrible. And it got the worst backlash in, 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 in like internet history. So then the studio decided to change the design into something that resembled closer to the video oh, game. Oh, yeah. So uh, it took them, like, I think they put a animation studio to, out of business trying to get this done. Yeah, so it's just a cash grab. It's just yeah. a studio cash grab that yeah. now uh, cost twice the amount of money that it should have. I should not have laughed, actually, about the animation company going out of business because a similar ha- thing happened to an animation studio that worked on The Lion King, which has made so much money. Um, it, 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 this happens a lot. Like, uh, for, Did you ever see Life of Pi? Um, no. Yes, 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 of course, yeah. Okay, so the... the, and it, the Visual effects uh, studio that won the Oscar for visual effects had gone uh, bankrupt like three days before the Oscars. Terrible. Yeah. And they're always the ones at the last end as well with the rush and they're they're doing long hours, crazy hours, never get the glory. Um, Shame. Don't work in animation, folks. I I I mean, I I don't I don't know what it's about, but. Yes. I haven't really re- read deeply into the issue. No. But at the same time, like it's a completely unnecessary movie. It's a very basic video game. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, they're just taking all those brands and making things Cash out of Cash grabs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do have a son that is their target audience. Yeah, I do. So yeah. I, I do understand that, that he might enjoy these movies because they're... Like made for for children. Wait till wait till they get started on Paw Patrol. They're already it's already a massive television. It has many program. movies already. Already has it? Oh, okay. Yeah, but realize. they're like straight to video. And yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. Big screen. Who knows what will happen there? Oh, God, I hate that I know what Paw Patrol is. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like I don't know. I, I don't think I'm the person to to have an opinion on this kind of movies. Yeah, I don't normally, but like I say. Uh, it looks like if it was on television, I wouldn't turn it off. As on it looks mainly for James Marsden. I mean, I was curious enough to watch it if it's on TV. Yeah, and the Jim Carrey villain. I think he'd be funny. Yes, but not go to the movies. Okay, cool. But some of you will. Sonic the Hedgehog out in cinemas in Amsterdam right now. Another film out this week is it's a Nicolas Cage film. <laughs> you know <laughs> what are you doing to me today <laughs> yeah, the Nicolas Cage film like seems like every six months he's just churning them out now uh this one's called Primal and get this okay wait for the storyline right, everybody right. this is Hit from me. IMDb Frank uh presumably played by Nicolas Cage he's caught wildlife in the Brazilian jungle including a 400 pound white jaguar and he ships it on the same ship as an arrested assassin the assassin breaks free and frees the animals and that's the film Oh, I, that it's it's kind of like snakes on a plane, but with 
on a boat, but with big cats. So it's like... And instead of Samuel J. Jackson, you've got Nicolas Cage. Animals on a boat. It's perfect. It has Sam Jackson in it? No, no. Instead of... Because Samuel oh. J. Jackson was on Snakes <laughs> on a Plane. But instead of him, then they've got Nicolas Cage. So it's Cage. like Noah's Ark yeah. slash Snakes on a Plane on a boat. And at some stage, some, you know, Nicolas Cage says something like, if you kill my cats, <laughs> I'll be mad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't expect this when you said that he was a hunter and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he goes, let's go hunting. That's what he says in the oh trailer. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, but um, there was a film, a Dutch film called Proy, where the, a, a lion let loose in Amsterdam, a total B movie. But I think this is kind of similar. You've got a, a, a white jaguar, a massive white jaguar loose on a ship. Uh, and then also an arrested assassin, Nicolas Cage. That's great. I think it was a fun B movie, top, top quality B movie. It's called Primal. It's 15 uh, certificates out in Amsterdam. It's also got a Dutch actress, Famke Jansen who's probably not so Dutch anymore. Oh, She's yeah, hundred. yeah, she is Dutch. Well, yes. I mean, uh, I think you you cataloged the the, the, the the perfect way. It's a uh, top-of-the-line B-movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very quickly as well, coming out uh, next week, you've got another remake with Harrison Ford and a big dog. Do you know, uh, this? Do you know what this is? Beethoven? <laughs> no, it's The Call of the Wild, which I think is by, based on a book by Jack, uh, was it London or something? Jack London. I think they may have made it a Disney film about it ages and ages ago. Um, is it like White Fang or something like that? Similar, basically. It's like a sled dog struggles for survival in the wilds of the Yukon. Um, oh. Harrison Ford is there with a big beard and a big dog and they're out in this lovely, beautiful scenery in the Yukon in, I guess, the US or Canada. And that's basically it. If you like that sort of thing, it's PG. Uh, good time. I mean, next week it's the uh, year. It's one week off for half term, um, four years for Kansi. So the kids are off school. That's the sort of thing maybe they want. I to mean, see. I guess, I guess it's still the beginning of the year because uh, we're getting a lot of bad movies. Yes. Yeah, it's like true. bear with us. Like next month we got we'll get better movies uh, to recommend. <laughs> There will be better movies, it's true. And don't forget, we've got Netflix as well with some things. We've got more films to talk about, and we're going to have a special report on the recent international film festival, Rotterdam, because Jan Arsinovich uh, is in the house, and we've got a special guest for you coming up. We are the Amsterdam Film Show. You're a guest on our show, Jan. Uh, and the interesting thing is, having moved to uh, Rotterdam, you uh, are you the only one out of all of us that has been to the International Film Festival Rotterdam? Uh, yeah, I didn't go. Yeah, I have never been. And you've been? Well, you should. I've only been to a couple of screenings, to be honest, because the past couple of weeks have been really crazy on all fronts. Um, but yeah, I think that film festivals are usually there for you to see weird shit. Uh, you know, yes. like because regular like blockbuster movies you will see in like regular distribution afterwards. Um, so I basically focused on weird things. Good. Uh, one of them was a movie called VHS. And um, <laughs> it is a weird like found footage type comedy essentially uh, recorded on vhs and <laughs> parodying a lot of late night tv um i think it could have been a bit longer and a bit crazier like they could have pushed it further it was relatively short i think about 70 minutes if i'm right so but it was very enjoyable and i will see it again and another thing uh, that I saw and that like blew my mind was uh, Cronenberg's Crash with live score um, played by the Rotterdam Phil Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, that's, a, that's an odd choice. <laughs> yeah, so that's a bold choice, and I applaud that choice. Well, the uh, composer um, Howard Shore was also there. Oh, um, and yeah, it was weird. Like you're in a big concert hall and you have like a full like classical orchestra plus some electric guitars in front of you and i mean we all know what happens on the screen and it's just such a weird 
combination like to, it was to see it, to see it like <laughs> musicalized like being musicalized live yes like it was definitely very surreal i also think um the most of the people there in the audience hadn't seen the movie before so it was like yeah a- they were just like oh cool uh it's a it's a movie with uh sandra bullock right <laughs> Because there's another crash with Sandra Bullock. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely not the one with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> it's David Cronenberg's crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, for lack of a better word, uh, a fucked up film. Mm, I mean, all his films are kind of yeah, fucked yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. It was a very surreal experience. I really wanted to go to that uh, festival specifically for... Uh, it's called movie. It's it's a movie called um, The Long Walk, I believe, and uh, it's directed by uh, this uh, woman, Mati Mati Do. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry for the <laughs> pronunciation, but this movie is from. Um, oh God, I, I completely forgot. But it's produced by by a really nice uh, person that I know, uh, Annika, oh. and and she produces mostly like genre gems. Um, the movie's from Laos, I remember now. Okay. So, so it's a really interesting kind of like a horror drama sci-fi. I don't know. It's kind of it's a general thing, and it's about an old La- Laotian hermit that discovers that the ghost of a road accident victim can transport him back to the fifty years to the moment of his painful death. So it's like a <laughs> like a combination between like sci- sci-fi and a ghost story, and it sounds. Like one of the coolest things I've ever heard, and I've been following the the, the making of this movie for a couple of years. And you didn't and get to go to that film, but I mean, so that would have been the draw. Was it expensive to go to the? Well, I mean, depends. I mean, you the- live in Rotterdam, <laughs> so I think most uh, places so, with Cineville, like you could actually just- no. So no? Un- unlike um, the uh, Leiden Film Film Festival, for example, yes. where they do accept Cineville and you could just watch everything for free. Um, the Rotterdam Film Festival doesn't. Oh. Uh, you could basically see, like, I think a selection of, like, short films for free with your Cineville. And I think you could also see, you know, you could get a discount on a particular subset of films. But otherwise, you with have to, like, Cineville. Oh, pay okay. for everything. So, of course, the most expensive thing was... The crash with the yeah, live orchestra yeah, yeah. because well, of the live orchestra. These kind of tickets, I understand if they, you must pay, but if it's a regular movie, like the Imagine Film Festival also does, like, oh, pretty much all of them, including the VR of mm. uh, Cineville uh, available. That's the festival I always wanted to go to and I never it's did. Awesome, man. <laughs> I, I, like, I, like I, I started volunteering two years ago because I, I went three years ago and I was like, wow, this is super fun. Like, I want to be a volunteer. So now I'm volunteering every year. And, uh, like, one of the... Like, Does it pay off, like, being a volunteer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super fun because, um, like, two, two years ago, it was when uh, Tigers Are Not Afraid came. And it's mm-hmm. this Mexican movie about this uh, Mexican female director, Isa Lopez, who, who's a freaking genius. And my job as a volunteer was to show her around uh, oh, wow. the city. So I was with her and Mick Garris and other directors, uh, Justin, uh, Justin Moorhead and Aaron Benson, just hanging out with them in Amsterdam drinking whiskey. And with Mick freaking Garris, who... <laughs> wrote uh, Hocus Pocus and directed a few Stephen King adaptations back in the 90s. So it, okay. it, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get to get to all the movies for free. So as a volunteer, you actually um, spend time with famous people, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. because when I, when you say volunteering at a festival, I'm like, yeah, scanning people's, you know... Oh, okay, well, there uh, are positions, <laughs> you know? And like, stuff. I, was, I was a guest um, kind of liaison... Because uh, the first year, because I'm Mexican and Isa Lopez is Mexican, so ha ha ha, you can speak in your, each other's <laughs> language. Uh, Those are the good volunteer positions to get. So yeah, don't go just for the because you're an check-in. expat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go for. So I was working on the press desk, and yeah, you get to see the filmmakers. So don't just go for the generic ones, and yeah. you can do things like yeah. leading the you discussions. You can be a film attendant. That's a position. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds so, like nothing, but I'll take it. And actually, <laughs> like since we're talking about the Imagine Film Festival, they are taking uh, applications right now for <gasps> volunteering for the next edition, which yes. is in April. Uh, oh 
my god, that's so soon. So it's the latest. It's yeah. it's like I think the last day it's on my birthday. Yeah, like now's the, 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 time. the the party. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go celebrate my birthday there. We should share. That. Yeah, do it. Awesome. I'll, I'll come down too. Um, so that's good. I mean, often with these things as well, you know, you you don't have to commit to the whole week or two weeks. You could just do like three or four sessions and then there yeah, three or four shifts, and you can get like all the tickets to watch all the movies that you want. Yes. Okay, good to know. I will look into that. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe like volunteer next year in the Rotterdam one uh, is, is worth it as well. I mean, I still spend a good part of my week in Amsterdam. So I will look into the Imagine Film Festival first. Because I usually see the movies from that festival after the festival and I usually like them. So like, yeah, I'm going to try and be there. Because for this year, it's... Uh, oh, shit. What was his name? The, the guy who started directing The Island of Dr. Moreau and uh, got fired the second day, uh. basically. <laughs> um, and, and then... And well, that's he... a cool thing to have in your CV. I have no oh, idea dude, who that but is. There, there, there's actually a documentary about that. Uh, about uh, about the, the, the failure of, of, of him in making this movie. Richard Stanley, now I remember. Uh, so he's, he's the guest of honor. <laughs> This uh, on this edition, and he's coming with his latest movie, which is Color Out of Space with Nicolas Cage, actually. Oh, wow. And it's a Lovecraftian sci fi, insane, weird thing. So that's a heads up for you, Amsterdam. That's coming in April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which sounds like a distant future, but it's not. No, no. <laughs> Better get out. I think that's the sort of thing that will sell out. Uh, but hey, the can, weather's going to be better. Yeah. Volunteer, and then you can That's get what you think. <laughs> hang out behind the scenes. You heard it, heard it here first, maybe. Right, we're going to talk about uh, a Netflix film. So it's been in the cinema, but it's really a Netflix film. Uncut Gems, which Kiko says was underrewarded in the awards. Well, yeah, it, it actually didn't start as a Netflix film. It was acquired by Netflix afterwards. All oh, right. So it, it in, in in the US, it did have like a like a regular uh, theatrical release, but internationally, it was released on on Netflix. Okay. Um, it's it, it. This is what happens with a lot of movies that are uh, like produced and then before getting a distributor uh, for for international theatrical releases, some do just do Netflix. That's but, such a weird time for Hollywood. Like, I know they feel very threatened by the whole streaming industry and then... Yeah, well, because uh, that the, the fact that it turned into a Netflix movie uh, made um, made it kind of... I, I think it was kind of like a political choice mm -hmm. because from the movies that were nominated for Best Film, um, you, you, you had uh, The Irishman, which is a Netflix film. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marriage Story, which is a Netflix film. So if you added Anka James, it would have been a, a, a third one that was a Netflix film. You know? Like, yeah, it's kind of weird. But last... it's also like interesting. It is super yeah, interesting. Like, I, mean, like, I mean, one of my favorite movies of like the last decade uh, was funded by Amazon. So <laughs> Which one? The Neon Demon. Yeah, no, that's and that's the point. Like, I think that Hollywood Studios... Um, because what I what I find the common denominator being in these kind of movies is that they are risky movies. Oh yeah. So uh, even that and then Roma, which is this Mexican movie that came out last year uh, from director Alfonso Cuarón, that nobody w wanted to fund. Boom! Netflix stepped in. Uh, the Irishman for uh, Martin Scorsese. He's been trying to make this film for years, and nobody really wanted to take the risk with Martin freaking Scorsese. <laughs> and Netflix said, "Like, no, you, oh, you need a billion? Like, yeah, here's two. You know." Yeah, this opens like a good discussion on like traditional media and traditional systems and. You know, do you actually need them? Like, do you need to make a movie in a big Hollywood studio because that's the only way to make real movies? I don't think so. And uh, and as an independent filmmaker myself, I would I would I would actually champion this the this new media's because I mean, you, yeah, it's traditional media, but um, we are an evol we are an evolving society, and and when technology and communications are just like moving and twice as fast three times as fast as they were 10 years ago then we just have to adapt and creators and 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 the uh, people who create art just need need to find different ways of, of yeah uh, i think like between the three of us we probably have enough equipment to to make a movie <laughs> on our own yeah um yes but sometimes even if you're super independent you do have big ideas 
48 hour require... film project uh, yeah the 48 Budget. hour film oh. project is a, is a great way to do it and that's what we were discussing uh, last week in the first episode of the Amsterdam film show the damn director Scott plug um listen back to the show i mean the, the 48 hour film project is definitely a, a way to to squeeze those creative juices that everybody has and because it, it's a cathartic creative mess and it's so fun to do it and you should do so it so stressful it's I, oh you it's, just it's, brought it up yeah and you just said we could do it it's oh. self-induced stress i didn't say we could do it within 48 hours oh, give, me, give me a week to sit on the footage to see what to, how, how i want to grade it no but that's kind of the point <laughs> that's kind of the point it's 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 uh indra uh the producer this that is the producer of my next film she said it like it's like film filmmaking made a sport yes you're just like training i look like a person who does sports <laughs> Well, I, I, I Don't think answer that, that many of the people who, who make films for these look that they never sport, okay. including myself. I'm a big sporter, but I'm, yeah, I'm like, I do, but I've got a foot in both camps. So yeah, I play tennis obsessively. Yeah. Because I think, because uh, we were saying, you were saying behind the, like when we were not, uh, not on air that you want to transition into video. And I, I think if you, like, just go for it. Uh, I mean, I I'm, like, you should do... doing video as we speak. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. Um, Where's the camera, man? No, I'm kidding. No, but um, ah, let's talk. Let's complain about finding clients when we're off the air. <laughs> oh, I'm God. Sure. I, I, I have <laughs> many complaints about that, too. And I'm sure many in Amsterdam. Uh, but uh, we were starting off to talk about Netflix films. Then we went into like indie <laughs> thing. But let's go back to the Netflix films because... Uh, one of the big ones, um, Uncut Gems. Uh, it's directed by Josh Safdie and uh, Benny Safdie, the Safdie brothers, they're known as. They yeah. did a good time with Robert Pattinson in 2017. It's a brilliant, amazing mm -hmm. film. Yeah, so it's available on Netflix, and I watched it last night too. Um, it's three hours long. No, 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 an hour, two hours and a quarter, I think, roughly. Good time. You saw uh, Good Time last night? No, no, I saw Uncut Gems last oh, night yeah, yeah. on Netflix. Um, it's stressful isn't it? it yeah yeah yeah. i think i had like five new white hairs by the time that that movie was finished so someone who might have anxiety is that a recommendation or oh, yeah for sure man okay. it's but it, it, it it's a it's a movie that just like grabs you and won't let go until the the freaking movie's over it's 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 tension after tension and and, and a lot of cringe because these guys you you there's you there's a constant thought in your head is like there's no way that everything is going to go well for this guy no you knew that you knew that impending doom um and it oh it's it's great setting in new york in this jewelry area where like um so basically um what's his name what's his name again adam sandler adam sandler's playing uh, a jeweler um howard ratner and he's got this locked up lock up place uh, it's really weird with like uh, automatic doors and you kind of go in this rabbit's warren uh, but he's selling top level jewels to like nba stars and stuff and he's got they're bling person. bling you know the, he's the one who provides with the ice yeah okay uh, so you've got all these sports stars coming in and various other people uh the weekend is in it uh wanting their jewels oh yeah <laughs> uh yeah yeah is that he's he's not very happily married um like, uh, but he's involved in the Jewish family life and stuff like that. So there's that going on with it. Uh, but he's got a mistress and she's in an apartment and she he features heavily in it. And uh, she's well, played... yeah, she works at the jewelry store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's played, I think, by a girl called Julia, Julia Love or something like that. I forget. She was awesome. Yeah, she's very, very good. First time actress. But they based the part oh, really? on her. This is interesting. So if you oh. see the film, you didn't know this. Um, she's very much in it. They wrote this. They wrote this and thought of this story quite a long time ago. But then it took a while to get to production, and they always had her in mind. But then, so she thought she had this part because it was based on her. Uh, she was a bit of a socialite and stuff um, in New York. But then these big time producers, so Martin Scorsese started to come on board as a producer. So all of a sudden, all these other actresses are auditioning when she thought she had the part like nailed up. So Scar Scarlett Johansson was considered. Even Seriously. At some stage, maybe even Kim Kardashian, <laughs> you know. But Oh my God. Well, I can see yeah, that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but in the end, no, it went out to her, and uh, she did a very, very good job. Um, and of course, Adam Sandler. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Kika. I'm not a big Adam Sandler fan, but um, it was a gripping story. He deserved it. The, the, there's this one scene when he just breaks down, and I was like, "Wow, man, you, yeah." I mean, there's, yeah. there's nothing 
I can no. say other than like great job. Yeah, and great it's freaking job. Yeah, he's he's like this gambling addict, and he just takes it too far. And it's like he's got mobsters that want the money back from him, and he's just going ridiculous, pawning bits of things left, right, and center, running across town, getting beaten up, juggling his girlfriend. But he's got great. He's got this plan, and if it pays off, and then you think it pays off, and then it doesn't. But he has and then this it compulsion yeah. for self sabotage. Yeah. That is, uh, I think, what what drives the movie is because. He's finally taken out a, a, a foot out of the hole. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and so he, then he comes up with an idea and is like, oh, what if I get inside this other hole to get out of this hole? <laughs> so it's just like, dude, stop. Yeah. St- it's, it's tough to watch. There's a lot of cringe moments, but it's exciting. It's a, it's a fantastic, uh, it's a really fun time. So- Does it make you question your own life choices? <laughs> Not at all. Like, I can relate to that. Like, it makes let's- you feel better. <laughs> in, 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 in some ways, you're like, oh, shit. But, but then at the end, it's like, okay, I, 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 ha- I think I don't have it that bad. I feel better. I do feel better <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <myself. laughs> I think and, my life is yeah. really not that bad. I complain about a lot, but this guy... Uh, it's kind of a spiritual moment. So at the beginning and the end of the film with the uncut gems at the center of the story is this kind of stone which has got a uh, very precious stone within it and it's kind of got magical qualities, maybe, maybe not probably. Like not. a pink diamond or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And that's at the beginning and then they make, they're quite creative with the way like, they have that. It's a healing crystal. No, I'm something. kidding. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's an opal. An opal. Yeah, 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 yeah I remember that. Uh, and as I was saying, the weekend features in this uh, and yeah, he's, he's, he's not a bad actor. Actor, I think uh, it gets a bit steamy with him on screen. Do you think you like the sound of it, Jan? Mm, yeah. Thank you for joining us for the Amsterdam Film Show. Always a pleasure. Yeah, you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, heads up for a film coming out on the 20th of February this month. The Gentleman. It's a Guy Ritchie film starring Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnan, Michelle Dockery. Um, yeah, that's going to be a good one. You want to see that, don't you, Kiko? Yes.